Welcome to the next lecture in the course metal additive manufacturing. In this lecture, I am going to talk about the costing in metal additive manufacturing. When I talk about costing, it is generally discussed in the first few weeks of the course itself that the cost is quite controlled and there is certain variability that comes for free. So, in a way like in injection molding or any of the conventional or subtractive settings. The cost of the mold, the cost of the fixture or the jigs which are designed to manufacture some specific parts, the, that cost has to be divided into only to the number of the parts which are to be produced. For example, using one mold, if 1000 components are produced and the mold cost is 2 lakh rupees, 2 lakh by 1000 per component mold design or mold fabricating cost would be 2 lakh by 1000, which is rupees 200. But in additive manufacturing with a single machine, we can have different kinds of the shapes, different kinds of the components, different kinds of the materials. So, this is one of the advantages that it comes in additive manufacturing, but still there is a trade off between additive manufacturing because the time for the processing is quite high for the large number of components, still injection molding and conventional machining CNC machines is used for the complexity of the parts additive manufacturing is generally used. So, let us have a quick look of what is costing in additive manufacturing. So, I will just discuss for the costing for additive manufacturing, then waste identification because the costs are structured in different way. Well structured costs have the criteria or the structure based upon the fixed and the variable costs majorly. And ill structure or unstructured costs sometimes have very sporadic distribution or the cost is not well defined. Those also we will see. Then we will see the cost categories like the prime cost, factory cost and so. Then we will see a few cost models, not a single model. We will try to see one or two models and try to select one best model that suits to the additive manufacturing in a general setting. Then what we will see is additive manufacturing cost advantages which are those and what are the capabilities of a firm with additive manufacturing. The cost for additive manufacturing, the cost structure which expresses the cost benefit ratio is key in determining whether or not series production is cost effective. The cost structure that means is the key word here that only tells us whether the process TV or the production process TV we have picked is right to go on or not, whether we have the break even point coming early, when the, what is the payback period, when do we get the return on investment. So, all these different criteria are there to determine the cost. So, we have break even point, we have uh, payback period, we have return on investment, then we have internal rate of return. So, there are certain criteria to determine that what we have invested, when it would, would be returned back. The cost factors must be carefully compared to one another because traditional and additive manufacturing technologies sometimes have quite different cost structure. This is only the point of discussion in the lecture series on the costing on metal additive manufacturing. Products made by additive manufacturing typically have an initial cost estimate based upon the number of manufactured cubic centimeters. That is what is the size of the component that is manufactured for conventional technology. Fixed costs are only allocated to a specific component design as it is said, but in additive manufacturing it is more cost of it because the overall machine, overall the throughout the life of the machine or the printer, whatsoever components are manufactured, the cost of the machine is divided into all those. However, the cost of the machine is the biggest contributing factor. If you see the cost of the machine, comparing to the consumables, the cost of the machine would be quite heavy. Additive manufacturing also involves the fixed cost and the variable cost. Fixed cost generally is the cost of the machine, or cost of the investment, cost of the uh, the land that you have got or the office that you have got. If it is rented, that comes in the variable cost. These factors you will just see. So, to compare the cost, if I try to draw the clear perspective in that, for conventional machining, the cost would be just like this. This is conventional, right. 
for additive manufacturing for example, it is some cost it will just have a I will just dot a dotted line in this, this is additive right. So, this is again the cost per part right and these are the number of parts or I would say lot size. Now, in this case you can see at this point at this point specifically at this size of the lot at this size of the lot the cost is common. So, but further the conventional machining takes an advantage of the, lay the lesser cost. However, still in this additive manufacturing for the product complexity if the product is more complex for example, if I put there uh, again cost per part and the complexity complexity of the components if it is in this direction for the conventional machining for the lesser complex parts the cost would be high and for the more complex parts the cost would be lesser. In this case this is conventional conventional machining right. And additive manufacturing for the complex parts and for the very simple parts the cost still remains same this is additive. In this case it means for the lesser number of the parts the conventional machining is better and only at this point at a little larger cost when the complexity could not be handled very easily by the added conventional machining that additive manufacturing has a benefit right. So, this is how can we, we can compare the additive manufacturing with the subtractive or the normal regular technologies. So, here the complexity generally comes for free because any complex parts could be put into the machine. Next is the waste identification. There are certain uh, reasons or certain points or certain leaks where the waste happens in the cost. That is why the costs are to be structured well so that we control the waste it has to be lean as far as possible. So, over production is definitely a one of the um, point where the components which are produced more than what is demand is. So, that is the over production it happens uh, when uh, more is made than what customers need right now. So, that brings the inventory cost that brings the storage cost that brings the material cost that is the material that is used in inventory or in production then shipping costs are there. So, shipping uh, does not change when the product is anyway and is a source of risk for the product as well. So, shipping cost also certain points could be there where the waste identification has to happen. So, in what lot sizes the product could be shipped. So, what should be the packaging. So, all these points are to be taken care of while shipping reworking and defects more the number of defects more is the rejection of the lot sizes more is the cost or most is the waste in there. Then over processing when work which is not required that is it is not pre planned something comes for catastrophic some post processing has to happen or some dimension goes wrong it has to be worked again. So, this becomes the over processing of the components or whatever we are trying to produce. Then the motion motion means unnecessary uh, motion waste of time and money like, like the material handling within the system. What is the material handling system where to store the system has is it closer to the machine where it is or what is the availability of the material at different points. So, this becomes another waste identification point where we can see whether the motion is quite controlled or not. Inventory definitely includes the costing in itself inventory is always known as necessary evil the required amount of inventory is necessary to fulfill the demand because losing the demand and losing the customer in itself includes a cost or putting more inventory also includes the cost of the investment of the raw material. So, inventory costs are to be controlled putting the economic order quantity and to see the econ economic order quantity with price breaks and so certain models are there waiting when the customers and the equipment are waiting for materials and parts these resources are being wasted. So, waiting is also a a cost that is to be taken care of. To look at 
the categories of the additive manufacturing cost, it could be well structured, it could be ill structured. Well structured costs would be labor, material, machine cost, clearly delineated, clearly differentiated that what cost, what investment is there and how do we try to see and allocate them. Ill structured is associated with the build failure that the component of the product that we have produced fails in between. The spool is finished. In between, suppose it has to be a continuous manufacturing, but spool is finished in between, so it has to restart. Sometimes that fusion does not happen properly, so that becomes a weaker point. It can break from that point. Then machine setup cost. Sometimes machine setup, this is again, if the spool is finished, that means the machine setup has to come be done something in between the manufacturing itself. So then that becomes the machine setup that is again a structured cost. Inventory, as I just discussed in the previous slide. Starting from inventory itself, the ill structure cost. So, parts can be made on demand, though it is expensive to have machines and equipment idle. For example, in spare part business, a certain type of part is not ordered very often. Traditional ways of making things make it too expensive and take too long to make parts on demand. So, that is why the parts are to be kept in reserve, which is known as inventory. Now, there is a lot of stock of parts that do not get ordered very often. This becomes an ill structured inventory cost. This inventory is holding on to the money for the products that are long being used and uh, it takes up again as I said, it takes up space, it takes up building, it takes up your land, it has the costing of uh, maybe renting, utilities, insurance of the components, taxes. Along with this, the products are also getting worse inventory sometimes is not completely non-perishable products. There is rusting, there is a processing on the products that some, sometimes has to happen. The packaging of, of the material, the, the conditioning of the room, for, if, for example, air conditioning is required for the components to be kept, for the metal manufacturing material to be kept, the spools to be kept, sometimes it has to be kept in a controlled temperature, controlled pressure. So that conditioning are all the inventory costs. Then using additive manufacturing to make these parts on demand eliminates the need to keep a large inventory and cost that come with it. Additive manufacturing helps us to make the parts as and when required, so that inventory cost sometimes is eliminated here. Next comes the transportation. Additive manufacturing lets more than one part to be made at the same time in the same build. This makes it possible to make a whole product in a one go. In traditional manufacturing, parts are often made in different places where an inventory of each part might be kept. Then those are to be transported from those places to a single settling point or single settling location. The parts are sent to a place where they will be put together to make a product. So transportation in additive manufacturing could replace some of these steps for some products because it could make it possible to manufacture the whole assembly at a single location just at the printer where we are trying to produce the whole component in one go or we are trying to produce all the parts and try to assemble it there itself. So this is how the transportation cost is reduced. Next is this would also make it less important to keep a big stock of each part of a product. It also cuts down the need for just-in-time delivery and the transportation of parts made in different places. So transportation also becomes an important cost to be considered. Next is consumers' proximity to production. In the first, a sizable fraction of consumers buy 3D printers or additive manufacturing systems and manufacture things themselves. So that means Manufacturing of component A, inventory of A is there, transport of part, manufacturing component B, manufacturing component C, inventory B. This is generally assembly of components in the traditional manufacturing. But in additive manufacturing, what we do, the second case is where this transportation is eliminated. We manufacture all the components of A, B, C here itself and from here itself, we do the assembly. If I call it step 1, 2, 3 and 4 directly from step 1 to 4 we could go while in additive manufacturing. So this is the second step in which customers submit their designs to a company that makes their products 
Now, the third scenario could also be there where commercial manufacturing sector adopting additive manufacturing which could alter the design and production technologies that also happens in this case. So, consumers proximity to production in additive manufacturing it allows you to have production closer to the consumer allowing little exposure to the hazardous circumstances and less generation of hazardous waste. Now, this could be a fourth possibility. For instance, at the moment a more remote location may order car components on demand with delivery taking several days. So, some of these components or goods may be able to be created on site or even close to the point of use, then this is a big thanks to additive manufacturing once again. On the top of it, the distinction between the manufacturers, the wholesalers, the retailers may start to become less clear as a result of localized manufacturing and streamlined procedures because each may be able to make goods in their facilities. So, the distributor or the retailer itself can manufacture and send the components for or use the components or repair the components as and when required. So, this becomes consumers closer proximity to the production. Next is again because I am talking about distribution, supply chain management, the cost has to be structured rightly here. The purchasing, operations, distribution and integration are all parts of supply chain. Locating product suppliers is a component of purchasing, demand planning, forecasting and inventory are all part of operations. So, in the supply chain management, while integration entails building an effective supply chain, distribution involves the transfer of items. Cost can be reduced by reducing the requirements of these activities. Efficient management of uh, the supply chain is largely responsible for the success of some multinational corporation and merchants. So, that is why supply chain management, green supply chain management, additive supply chain management, different kinds of the concepts have been embarked upon by various management researchers and thinkers and various models have been developed on these as well. So, these have innovated how they track inventory and restock shelves using technology which has led to the lower expenses. Then vulnerability to supply disruption. This is the direct relation with the supply chain management as well. If there is disruption in the supply, the vulnerability to the disruption is high in the otherwise than additive manufacturing systems. Supply chain will be less vulnerable to disasters and interruptions if additive manufacturing decreases the number of linkages and moves production closer to the consumer. Let us mark these words. Every factory and storage facility along a product supply chain is a possible site at which a disaster or disruption could impede the creation and delivery of a product. So, there are fewer possible disruption points in a supply chain with a fewer links and smaller overall size which is possible in additive manufacturing and additionally if the production is moved closer to the consumer, production will become more decentralized with number of facilities producing a small number of items rather than a small number of facilities generating a large number of products. So, this impacts from supply chain disruptions may be localized than the regional or global systems. The vulnerability to the supply chain, how is it in the traditional and in the additive manufacturing setting? In the traditional manufacturing setting, if you see here, manufacturing resource providers are, there are four traditional manufacturing systems are there. Then manufacturing parts and components, there are other systems with which they interact. The assembly happens at only a single place and this assembly is now distributed to different retailers for distribution. This is how it goes. But in additive manufacturing, you can see this 1, 2, 3, 4 levels are there. It has directly gone from 1 to the 4th level that is additive manufacturing, localized production like we get only printers from them and try to produce them localized here and we directly come to the consumer. We do not have any redundancy here. So, a problem at any step during manufacturing or assembly could cause deliveries to be at the retail distribution to be delayed. So, localized additive manufacturing does not share the same vulnerabilities. So, the first possibility is that no parts or components will be assembled and directly we get it from the localized production. Right. Now, next comes 
the well structure cost I have just listed a few well structure cost based upon the material based upon the machine based upon the labor and some other parameters. Later I will come to the general cost structure in manufacturing and try to discuss about the cost structures specifically in additive manufacturing. In the well structure costs, the metal material costs if I say there are certain costs such as material cost, labor cost, machine cost and other. In the material cost if I am talking about specifically it could be kilogram of the material per part or the kilogram of the support material per part. So, this kilogram of the material per part would be my metal material. Let me say the stainless steel. So, this cost 1 would be generally greater than even the twice of the cost 2. This is cost 1, this is cost 2. Next comes the build material cost per kg. When we purchase pools of the build material or the support material, it is purchased in the spool per kg. It does not give the spool length, it is generally the spool per kg. So, this cost is quite heavy. If I say the cost of the build per kg versus cost of support per kg, this again build, build cost would be quite heavy. Now, this comes the cost of the material used in one build, the material cost per part. This is only we are talking about the material which is the built material and the support material and the costs are divided into different categories. Next comes the machine cost. First is a machine and auxiliary equipment cost. Then we have equipment depreciation cost per year. So, each year what is the depreciation? Along with the depreciation we need to get the maintenance, we need to get the extruder head cleared, we need to get the maintenance of the machine, the components, the different moving sliders cleaned and regular uh, uh, the annual maintenance contracts are to be written that becomes also the third component here. The total machine cost per year which is the sum of the previous cost and per year it is calculated the machine cost per part. So, the machine cost per part is taken into the calculations and this is distributed towards or along the life cycle of the machines or the all the components which are expected to be produced using this specific machine. Next come the labor cost. The labor cost is the machine operator cost per hour first thing, set up time to control the machine is the second factor. Then we have post processing time per build, labor cost per build, labor cost per part. Obviously, the labor cost per build would be taken from the machine operator cost right and the setup time that it takes labor cost per part is again taken from the labor cost per build itself. Build time plays a, an important factor and an important role in this build time is a significant component in regard to estimating the cost of additive manufacturing and number of software packages are there as I showed you the Iger software in the previous weeks here which gives the estimated build time and based upon the build time taking the material cost into the consideration it also gives us the cost of the part. So, there uh, there tends to be two approaches to estimating the build time number one was the detailed analysis number two is the parametric analysis. The detailed analysis utilizes the knowledge about the inner workings of the system while the parametric analysis utilizes the information about the process time the characteristics such as layer thickness or so. So, different kinds of systems are there to understand the time of the build. Next come the other components of the cost such as number plat per platform and how many numbers of the components could be put in single platform. Then platform build time itself, production rate per hour, hours per year in operation that is the working hours of the company. For example, for an 8 hours working day, what is the time when the machine is actually working? Let, let me say for the 7 hours, if 1 hour break is there. But if we run the machine in the 24 hour shift, still machine has to wait for a few time in between for the breaks. So, what is the total number of hours per year in an operation? Maybe considering 20 hours per day machine is working and the Sundays are off 6 days a week. So, 20 into 6 into the number of months that is 12. This is the total number of hours the machine has worked in an year. Production volume total per year is another factor. So, this is the primary cost ladder which illustrates the relationship among the cost terms 
if we talk about any estimating and costing procedures in the manufacturing sciences, you will generally see these terms definitely. One is the direct cost, these are the direct cost. You can see the word direct written here. Direct expenses, I would say, direct expenses. Right. Then we have second is the factory expenses, third is the administrative expenses, then selling and distribution expensive, all those collecting together gives us a total cost of the product. Then we have the markup rate that is the uh, selling, marketing and everything. This gives us the foreign file and selling price. Now, direct expenses includes the direct materials, the direct labor, the direct engineering, the direct expenses which are there inculcated into the system. Because expenses is written here, I will write here it is direct cost. right? So, direct material means material that, that you can see directly, that I can touch. For example, in the direct material, I can see stainless steel is there. Ceramics, sometimes yeah, ceramics is in itself, here is direct, direct material as well, but sometimes it is also taken as indirect cost because we cannot directly see them. Then the factory expenses. So, it is direct cost or primary cost that is written here. Factory expenses are the rent of the factory, the electricity, the other factors, those are add to get the factory cost here. Next, we get the factory cost. Factory cost plus the administrative expenses. Administrative expenses means the documentation, the uh, rent of the or the salary of the gatekeeper or for the other people who are not directly involved in the manufacturing. That give, gives us the administrative expenses. Now, the ad administrative expensive added to the factory cost gives us the production cost. Now, production cost when are is added with the selling and distribution expenses gives us the total cost of the product and with the markup rate at the profit level the selling price is taken. But this is the general cost ladder and then a very general criteria of costing is activity based costing we call it ABC criteria whenever manufacturing costing is taken or seen ABC criteria is the base criteria that is uh, always seen first to understand the system. Later, the detailed models depending upon the kind of the machines that we have, depending upon the kind of the materials being used, number of printers which are being installed, the kind of the setup changes, different models have been suggested by different researchers, but ABC is a very basic model to understand. So, it is a new model known as time driven ABC. This technique makes it possible to take into consideration a wide variety of elements that have an impact on how resources are used. The steps involved in the initial models processes have been streamlined into four primary processes in order to facilitate the estimation of the cost relevant activities. So, the activities which are cost relevant which are given here are preparation of the build as first, then production of the building job, manual removal of the sample parts and support, then post processing. When I say preparation of the build, this means the CAD is part of it, computer aided design preparation and the preparation of the machine, machine preparation, right. Then production of the building job, production of the building job means building the process actually. So, this is generally the processing or, or the actual I would say the 3D printing here that happens here, right. I would generally say building. building or I would say printing. Then manual removal of the parts in which the more one removal is the support, support removal, then we have to remove the component, the build extraction I would say, build extraction. Then comes the post processing. In the post processing, again the support has to be cleaned further and in this the support has to be completely removed and the surface treatment sometimes has to be taken care of. There are different kinds of the treatments which are there in the post processing. So, it could be surface treatment, vapor smoothing could also happen. So, right different kinds of then we have definitely the quality control as one of the force system itself in which the verification and documentation also happens. Now, this is how it is 
mentioned in this illustration as well here that in metal aluminum manufacturing the build preparation is there right then in which CAD and machine preparation is there when, when manufacturing post processing quality control and the same processes which I mentioned in the previous slide are mentioned here and for each of them there is a separate process in itself it is a process it has a steps which are to be laid properly before doing it this is why it is known as well structured costing system. So, it is a time driven ABC costing means as and when the activities keep on going the costing is will calculated. So, at each point the costing is calculated here the cost drivers at each point are given and as and when the process keeps on going from left to right the calculated the cost is estimated accordingly. So, this is ABC. So, this is the comparison between the costing where you can see the blue color is the machine cost the maximum cost component in the percentages if you see here for the build rate for the machine utilization for the material cost and for the machine investment cost which is given by a study by Lindemann et al in 2012 you could see the maximum component is machine cost then comes the costing for the materials here as the second part this is one this is two I am just writing it or marking it down as per their contribution or as per their percentages in the system first is the blue second is the green third is this maroon then comes the light blue as fourth then we have five and six orange and purple right I think the six should be orange five should be this purple. So, what are these? So, first one is machine cost second one is the material cost third one is my post processing cost then I get the fourth that is the light blue that is the preparation cost preparation means preparation of the system preparation of the build preparation of the machine preparation of the materials. So, all these different costs are taken here right then we have the oven the electricity and everything else in it the building process fix finally, when we try to do so that becomes the sixth component. So, this is how the cost is distribution in the percentages if we try to see definitely it could be seen here that the machine cost is a maximum part because the machine is expensive and other materials are consumables, but distributed towards the whole life cycle of the components which are produced using this printer for instance if it produces 10,000 of the components. So, it reduces to the minimum in the overall. So, to see the cost of the build we have the direct cost and indirect cost the direct cost which was mentioned previously as well the material cost that is the pot volume which is given in this specific study there is uh, 58 euros per kg the waste is 50 percent of the unused powder the production overhead which is the indirect cost this is the only direct cost that we have that is the first part in this this is the direct cost the rest all are the indirect in a way right. So, just all the indirect are here right these are indirect, but this is direct. In which the overhead costs are there labor cost is there overhead cost you can see the facility rent it is mentioned for in this study that 130 euros per meter square this is the facility rent here then ancillary equipment is costing 246 euros per meter square energy consumption it is 1.5 users per hour for the labor the technician and the other the rate is given 32,000 or 33,000 users plus 22 percent maybe that is HRA or something then administrative overheads that is labor it is not provided here the data was not provided the hardware computer the etc in administration the software like windows or certain other small softwares like microsoft office or small other softwares which are there the consumables in administration all those costs are mentioned here then indirect cost itself the machine purchase of jobs in system the maintenance of the machines the softwares which are there in the machine for example, Iger software or other software updates sometimes has to be purchased those are there small other hardware that is the small units for the machine which are to be produced for example, the platform the nozzle head etcetera those are all involved in the indirect costing. So, this is how the cost model looks like. So, cost could be looked from the different perspective by the different I would say levels of the hierarchy or different 
parts of the system, parts of the system, I would say different members of the system. If I say the finance and accounting, finance or accounting person, right, then we have the manufacturing person, then I have the management. They have different perspective for the cost, I would say the perspectives. So, what finance and accounting would say like in ABC costing, it would say it has to be method based, it, it could be qualitative or quantitative, right. Later it would say it, it, the qualitative or quantitative cost, whatever it is, it has to be calculated using parameter technology or intuitive the estimating has to happen with all these ways, but finally resolve to the direct comma indirect or overhead etcetera courses, right. Then manufacturing person would say that the cost because we all I am manufacturing it, one perspective it says is the cost model could be based upon the uh, I would say processing that is the building or the printing. Then we have pre processing. then we have the post processing. Here also finally, pre processing, post processing, the process oriented cost would again lead to the direct and indirect or the overhead I would say direct cost, they would call it direct, indirect. fixed cost that is the investment cost or so and variable cost fixed or variable fixed versus variable. Management would say we will calculate the cost based upon the capital that is investment right. Then they would say material that is procured. then administrative costs here. This could be they would say it could be at process level the, for the specific process right. Then certain processes being combined makes a small manufacturing unit, then small units being combined makes a system. These levels are there, but still they would again come to the finally direct in the processes or indirect in the processes. Whatever we do, you can see at the inner level here, the inner level here, we have to break down the cost into the direct and indirect, right. In the outer envelope, you see different people have different perspectives. There is a clear uh, differences between these lines. But finally, we reach to a single point here. Right. So, they are different whatever we do, we need to understand the expenses direct and indirect and those are to be divided into pre-processing. These different kinds of models we will try to see in the next lectures in the costing in material manufacturing. Thank you.